Okay, so let us implement mutable environments. Um, and we're going to start with uh, what is, how do we represent a mutable environment? And the way we do so is by having a heap that contains frames. So again, just to recap, a frame is each of these boxes. And frames will have uh, references to other frames. And the heap will contain all frames. And the references will be the keys of the heap. Okay, so it will be the handles in the heap. So let's go back here. Again, so uh, whenever I talk about this heap of frames, I'm just going to call it the memory. Um, and today what we're going to do is just implement frames. Um, as you have seen, there are two kinds of frames. There will be uh, the root frame, which has no uh, a reference to nothing. Uh, and there's uh, frames that are ch children of, so such as this one, which has a reference to a parent. So the parent is optional. Um, only one frame has no parent, which is the root. And everything else, this will be um, a, a multi-level tree. Um, and that's what we'll be Im implementing, right? So again, just to recap, a reference, a frame has a reference to its parent and a map of local bindings, which we'll call the locals. So we, we've used this notation to represent uh, a frame that has a single parent, and we use E0 to represent handle zero. Uh, and in this case is another example of a root frame. Okay. Um, and, okay, so let's try to implement it. So we're just gonna implement frames, and then I want to implement a few operations on frames. So first thing we want to do is um, represent a frame. So we want to have a struct that has a frame. Um, so it has a parent, parent first, and it has locals. Okay. Um, so if we want to represent, so here are two examples. If I want to represent a frame, a root frame, and in this case I wanted to represent this block right here. Uh, I could represent it with this text, uh, which corresponds to this code, right? So I, I write a frame that has no parent and then has a hash table that contains key value, key value, where key is X and then assigned to three and Y is assigned to five. And if I print this out, let's do F1. I should have the the frame above, so as you notice, false for the parent, and then a hash table with y and x. Um, key values get reordered just because of how the hashing algorithm works. So then, if I want to represent a hash table, uh, sorry, a frame with a parent, which is this case, um, again refers to this case right here, where you would, oops, sorry, represents this case right here. Um, so I want to have Z6, X7, and then the parent is E0. So the way I would uh, create such a frame is by creating a, this frame that parent is handle zero, right, handle zero, and then two binders defined inside the hash. Okay, um, so finally, what I want to do, let me just show you, are uh, now operations. So I wrote these test cases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste them here. Um, and we're gonna go through, require, Rack unit. Okay, so if we have a closure, um, and oh, here we already had some some frames. Let me comment these out. Okay, so here are two frames. Um, da -da -da. Frame get. Okay, so now let me try to implement frame get. What frame get is doing is given a frame, you you want to look up a variable of that frame. And you do so with function uh, frame get. So let's define it. So what we want frame get, given a frame, given a variable, it should return the the value associated with that variable. So in this case, you have an x, 
Um, so what you need to do is uh, locals, which is going to be frame locals of f. Okay, and now what I want to return is I want to look up. This is a hash table with the key values. I just want to do a simple lookup of locals of x. And that's what I want to return. So if the variable is defined, it should return it. If not, it won't. So let's look at this example. Let me kind of... Ah, here are more examples, more test cases. Disclosure. This should all be D. I don't know why this was called S. I'll fix the slides. Okay, D, D. Okay, so let's see what's complaining about. Frame locals. Comment commented out because this file also requires frame. I want to make sure that. Oh. Then what's going on? Check equal. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do I'm gonna comment this out because this is already defined in the pair in the in this file. So I want to make sure there's no clashes. Okay, and now it's not hash ref. Let's see. Okay, so now let me comment out these things. Okay, so as you can see, if I do F1, let's see what we have here. I get um, B defined and uh, A defined. And if I want to get the contents of A, I do def um, frame get the variable A. What that returns is number 10, as you can see here, which is why this test passes. Okay, so next thing I want to do is um, push and uh, put somewhere. I don't have put, but I will also define put. So the next thing we want to do is when you call a function, you want to create a new frame that takes um, a reference to the parent, and you want to initialize it with a pair, which represents the parameter and the value of the parameter. So I want to define frame push, it takes uh, a parent, takes a key, takes a value. What that does is create a new hash table, a new frame that has a given parent, and then I want to initialize the hash table. Okay. So then if I do frame push, I want to do, okay, so this is the variable x, the number 99. And if I run this, now I get a frame here whose parent is handle zero and is initialized with a binder, a single binder. It's going to be important when we do function application. Uh, in the end, you won't call these functions directly because you will just use top level functions uh, called environment functions. Environment functions will call um, operations on frames internally. Um, so we looked at frame put, we looked at frame, sorry, frame push. Finally, we want to define uh, frame put. 
um, and frame put given a frame, a key and a value, what it's going to do is it's going to create, it's going to first, we, we're going to take the old locals, uh, which come from looking up uh, frame locals of F. And then what we want to do is we want to create a new frame that has the old parent. So we're going to do frame um, parent of F. And then I'm going to create a new hash table. Right, so now what I want to do is define new locals. New locals performs a hash set where we take the old locals and we add key v, key, k and v. Okay, so now I do new locals. And that is it. So now if I take um, f3, if my last frame is f3, and I do f of 3, I do frame put of uh, the variable w and I assign the number zero you should now see a frame with two variables frame put is already defined so let me call this so there's no confusion okay yeah, because all of these variables, all of these functions are already defined, and they're defined in this file, hw5, which you're going to use. But because I'm recalling the same name, it doesn't like it. So it, it throws out an error. Um, so I call it just frame put. It's the same code. Um, okay, so what I wanted to show you is that uh, put adds a new binder. So as you can see, you have w assigned to 0, uh, which is what I just added. And of course, if you rename something, if, if a variable already exists, currently there's no error, so it will just happily do that. So in this case before, I had um, x assigned to 99, and now it's assigned to 0 because I assigned here to 0. And that is basically it. These are the three operations you'll, we will that we've learned. We've learned that there is a root frame, um, which is an initial frame without a parent uh, and no... Um, binders and then a, f a push operation which represents this um, operation right here which creates a new frame and initialize it with the parent in this case e prime and the key and value and finally we also learn how to given a frame perform a put which represents this notation um, and finally just a recap you're not going to use frame operations directly these are used internally but i just wanted to give you a and overall of how these things work.